This is my second attempt at making this video. I had to take the first attempt down. I got a, uh, a copyright infringement uh, complaint from the manufacturer of the test unit I was using uh, that I was trying to demonstrate. Um, but this video is, um, and the first video was uh, meant to show the amount of testing that I perform on these modules. Um, if you follow my channel, you're probably aware that um, there's been various uh, gossip circulating some forums about uh, these modules not working. And um, I find it a bit uh, confusing. It's uh, very straightforward. Uh, there's not a great deal in them. It's just really eight of these circuits. And to a large degree, the, um, all these components can be shorted out and uh, the, um, the pod would still work. Uh, so um, some of the uh, feedback I've got is um, nothing short of uh, bizarre. I uh, had uh, someone yesterday saying that because I'd use such a thin board these melt when you try and solder them, which I don't know what he's using to try and solder them. I have to assume a blow lamp or something. Um, but this is a, a, a perfectly suitable thickness of board for this size module. and um, I think 99.5% of people haven't had problems. Um, the few that have do seem to want to create uh, trouble and um, uh, claiming these aren't tested before they go out. So what I wanted to do is just show the level of testing I do. I do this for pretty much everything I send out, but this is an example of the sort of testing that I do. If you follow my channel, you're probably already aware that I do test things very thoroughly and um, uh, most of what's been said is nonsense. It is perfectly possible that uh, there could be faulty ones uh, now and again, but it's um, fairly unusual. If you have ordered any of these recently, then um, sorry for the delay in shipping. I decided to retest them all before uh, shipping anything out. And uh, for all 200 that I've tested, I didn't find a single faulty one. Now, I was asked to show the uh, way in which a test procedure was written for this. Now I've, um, I'm going to show the, the tester here but I've had to redact the name because I don't want another claim by this manufacturer that uh, I'm showing copyright and um, I'm actually well within my rights to, to show this under fair use but um, I, I've got a policy that if somebody complains uh, and it's a valid copyright uh, claim then I, I take down the video, that's what I've always said. Um, it's unfortunate because I had intended to use this uh, to feature fairly heavily in some upcoming videos while I'm developing some new equipment, but I've got a replacement uh, from a different manufacturer on order and they've uh, confirmed that they're happy for me to show their firmware uh, and uh, software rather. Um, but um, I'm still going to show this um, testing the modules. I just can't show you the test code that I wrote. Um, th this, this comes with software. You can buy software separately for it. Uh, if I know that some people buy units that I show in my videos, but if you do buy one of these, do not come back to me if you have problems with it uh, or the software. Um, now, as I say, I will show the replacement unit and the testing that I do with that, but uh, at the moment I'm using this to test these modules, so I'm, that's what I'm showing this one. So the testing is carried out. Um, as I say, each module contains eight of these circuits, so in order to test these, uh, what I do is apply a, a voltage to this point and then check the voltage here and here. I then apply a voltage to this point, I check here and here. I apply a voltage to this point and then check here and here. But rather than doing it um, just a single test, there are eight of these, so the values put onto each node are values across all eight uh, channels from 0 to 255. It, it puts every single permutation onto each of these pins and checks that the correct value is coming out. It then uh, applies a voltage to, the, and it does that with the voltages applied here. I then apply a voltage to this point uh, to pull this value high and then check that the three nodes have gone high. I do the reverse, pull it low and make sure that the three nodes have gone low. Um, this unit allows you to set pull-ups on each of the nodes, so it sets pull-ups and makes sure that it can be pulled up and down correctly. Now that is all this module does. There is no other possible testing you can do on this. And if these tests all work, then the module is 100% uh, working. Uh, there's no other testing that uh, you can carry out. The only thing I would say here, if you have tried to build one of these, or, uh, any version of this, is that I've, uh, the values I've used here are all within the original Fluke uh, protection modules. 
and this is an input going through this 3K resistor that goes to a 74 series latch. Now 3K on the input of a TTL device is maybe a bit high and I suspect a lot of problems might be coming up because the value here is too low and that's going to be dependent on the type of a TTL device that you use and if you look at the original Fluke uh, pods they used a uh, fairly unusual for the time um, series of uh, chip for the, um, the latch. So that's something that really you should check if you're getting problems if it's erratic or won't uh, pass a cell test then just uh, scope the uh, signals going into the latch because uh, I've got a feeling this value might be a bit on the high side but as I say this is a reproduction so I kept the same values uh, who might have questioned fluke it worked for them so uh, that's what I used here uh, all the rest of it is very straightforward it's just some some diodes and some resistors so um, as long as the paths um, are conductive and the diodes work then um, uh, it all must be well if the diodes are short then of course the values uh, here won't be correct because it will be shorted up to the rail and the same with this one if this is short then um, it will be shorted down to the rail if they're open circuit I won't be able to do the pull up and pull down test so it's, it's a 100% test and just to show you this unfortunately I can't show you the code which is what I really hoped I could do um, had a lot of problems with this and in particular the software there's a serious bug in the software and I uh, was hoping to show a workaround that I'd found to enable uh, this sort of testing but as I say I, I had a copyright uh, claim from the manufacturer so I had to take that down um, uh, so sorry for those who wanted to see the code but um, I don't really have any choice uh, in the matter um, but the way I've got this uh, set up I've written the code I've put it into the tester and uh, all I have to do is uh, pull up the uh, the number the test number that I've uh, created for this and I'll test it first without a uh, module fitted you can see it's saying busy test quite a while it's, it's about 1700 tests uh, individual tests that it carries out and uh, as I say it's testing every single node with every single permutation in all possible directions so there is no other uh, more in-depth testing I can do now this should of course fail because we don't have a module plugged in and it has indeed failed and it will now tell us uh, what all the failures are and there'll be quite a few of course because we don't have anything plugged into this and I'll take a module and I'll plug it in making sure I've got it the right way up so we'll plug that in and it's not just testing the um, yes or no it's conductive because we've got resistors here we know there's going to be a voltage drop so I've got the test set up you can specify the voltage for the pass or fail it's set up for a very tight tolerance about 0.1 volts and uh, so it, it will in theory even pick up the uh, if the resistors are the wrong value or in the wrong place and in fact if you put your finger on this when it's running the test will fail so I'll start the test again you see it's busy again a while as I say it's doing a lot of testing so although it's doing the testing fairly quickly it still takes a while to complete but it's still much quicker than trying to do this by hand of course and you can see this now passes and just to prove that it will pick up shorts and the like what I'm going to do is rerun the test but I'm going to short a couple of pins together so I'll short these two pins together rerun the test wait until it finishes and this time of course it should fail because we've got a short and I've done similar sort of testing by removing um, the resistors or removing diodes and I, uh, it's been a hundred percent successful in picking up any faults I can throw at it okay so it's obviously failed the test because uh, we had a short and it will tell us why it's failed um, there is no more testing I can do beyond this this is why I have a fairly high degree of confidence that these go out um, working having said that um, the complaints I had from uh, the, the main uh, protagonist uh, I did say if he returns any units he thought were faulty I could retest them and I'll replace or refund him but uh, that wasn't good enough for him either but that's all I can do I'm testing these as thoroughly as it is possible to test them they're all tested like this there is as I say no if you can think of any additional testing that can be carried on to, out on this then 
by all means uh, let me know but as far as I'm aware there is no more thorough testing that I can do on this uh, as far as the thickness of the board is concerned that is absolutely suitable and correct for a module of this size and is in fact the same that was used by Fluke as well so um, it's unfortunate if uh, you're having problems building the pod I don't really offer technical support um, what I do is I respond to any faults that are um, flagged up and I look into it um, but if the re fault report is what well, I measured between two pins and it wasn't really working then I do check it uh, for all the ones I have if I don't find a fault it has to be a one-off I'll replace the module if you return it um, but um, these are so simple that uh, if you do find um, a resistor that's not properly soldered then you can just uh, solder it of course they should work when they go out and uh, I test them as thoroughly as I can one thing I would add is um, the whole point of my channel and the parts I supply is to try and keep vintage equipment going into the future for as long as possible. If you buy anything off me, you become part of that process. You're then responsible for doing what you can to try and support these products. So if you start kicking up a, a fuss, then uh, you're not really helping anyone. I'm doing this, I don't make money doing this as I've explained in the past. Um, so if you decide you, you want to try and disrupt sales, all you're doing is hurting other people. It makes no difference to me financially if you buy these or you don't. I'm just doing this to try and uh, support the equipment. Um, but as I say, if you do have any issues and you think there's a fault, then uh, please let me know and I will look into, into it. If it turns out there is a design fault or a manufacturing fault, then I will of course do something about it.